and we're back so here's our phrase craze machine that we picked up um yesterday day before uh, a little bit about these um the company here merit merit industries uh, i think they're over in connecticut not too far from me um and they uh they came up with this thing where they had these machines called trivia whiz and trivia whiz was everywhere and it basically was video trivia right you had the buttons here you know it ask you a question you pick which answer you thought it was cancel play yada 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 um but it's trivia whiz kind of they had updates for trivia whiz and then they had like you know the the raunchy trivia whiz and all that because these obviously these weren't in our these weren't really in arcades um they were but really the setting for these was bars right this is this, these were more adult uh, oriented games so um once those kind of got phased out once people got kind of tired of trivia is they uh they had a conversion that you could do to phrase craze um and i believe this probably was a trivia is initially because if you look at the generic merit bezel here it says 1984 but if you um you look at the copyright on phrase craze you can see all our nice our nice burn in here right Look at the copyright on Phrase Craze, it's 86 or 87, I believe. So what they did was, like any other arcade game, they made kits to convert your uh, Trivia Wiz into Phrase Craze. And here you go. This is most likely a converted Trivia Wiz into Phrase Craze. Now, these uh, cabinets, if this looks a little familiar, this kind of setup, it's because you've probably seen it somewhere before. There you go. Now, obviously, there are differences between that... And that, but I'm guessing uh, that Merit saw how uh, like the design, or saw how well that design did. So they kind of went with uh, they went with uh, something similar. Thing that's different is these. Obviously, these have the coin mix uh, under here under this control panel. The coin returns are here. There's no coin door per se. Uh, you have a coin box down here, uh, which you have to key into. And yeah. And amazingly, now, if you've seen, I've had a couple of these, or a few of these, I should say, through the years. If you've seen any amount of these, these things are usually beat to crap. Because they sat in bars, they got kicked, they got beat, the floors got cleaned, uh, and the mops got, you know, brushed against the uh, the particle board. And they're generally not in great shape. They reek of smoke. Um, this one, not so much. I have a feeling that this one was either taken care of in a bar or it got taken out of a bar um, early on and then put in someone's home. Because this cabinet is in really, really nice shape. You have a little uh, little smidgen rare by my finger. But everything's really nice. It's got a, you know, a little bit of chipping on the bottom. But if you look at it, it really hasn't lived that hard a life. Someone took uh, took pretty good care of this. And the story is that uh, the guy that I got it from, he uh, he actually bought it for 50 bucks at a yard sale about 15 years ago. And he put it in his basement, and um, there it stayed ever since until now he's moving, he's cleaning stuff out. So he uh, he gave it to me, which is nice because he's like, ah, I paid 50 bucks for it, I got my use out of it, just come get it, get it out of my way. No one wanted to really buy it, so I knew the guy, he gave it to me, which is nice. And the guy that he got it from... At the yard sale, apparently had it in his basement for a long amount of time, too, or a decent amount of time. So, you know, uh, like I said, it's been in a home for a long time. Almost makes me feel a little bit bad converting it to Arkanoid <laughs> or converting it to something else. Uh, a little bit bad, not not totally bad. So some issues we got to deal with, right? And we'll power it up and we'll look at the cabinet. But uh, one issue, if you're astute, you might have realized is that Arkanoid is uh, it's a vertical game. The screen goes up and down. This cabinet is horizontal. The screen goes uh, sideways, so to speak. So that is going to be an issue we're going to have to deal with. Uh, I don't know if we can deal with it. I'm pretty sure we can because I've seen, I swear I've seen pictures of these cabinets being used as Arkanoids. Um, so there's got to be a way to do it. I'm sure there's just some, uh, modifications we got to make as far as the, uh, how this monitor sits in here. Uh, if we flip this down, I really like the makeup of these cabinets too, uh, because they have two nice little shelves in here. 
All right, you got one shelf here, one shelf there. This monitor is not sitting on a shelf, which is good. It's sitting, uh, it's, it's, it's bolted in, in front of here. So that means we could probably modify the mounting well, from that to that. So the challenge too is gonna be this coin door, uh, or excuse me, this control panel. This control panel's got all sorts of stuff going on. It's got all sorts of holes. It's got a hole for the key here. It's got these holes, these holes, these holes over here, these holes. And um, I was kind of hoping that uh, I just get a cabaret Miss Pack control panel like that one and stick it in there, but that's not going to work. They're different, different dimensions, different configurations. So uh, what we're going to wind up doing is we're going to wind up uh, one or two things. Like I said, this is in good shape. So I'm either going to look for another of these control panels and then patch it and do my modifications where I need to do them, set it up for Arkanoid. Um, or I'm just going to do it to this one. And we could always, if we want to convert it back to phrase craze for whatever reason one day, we can. Um, I, I want to try to make it that I can kind of bring it back to this if I wanted to. I don't think I'll want to, but you never know. So, yeah, so we got a work cut out for us there. Um, coin box. I'll show you in here. Here go my keys. It's got the coin, the coin hopper, coin box. Uh, there are schematics in there. Which is nice. Looks like uh, very dirty schematics, but they're in there. Nice manual. I don't think I've ever seen schematics online for this. I might scan these and maybe upload them somewhere if someone else needs them. There's a. Uh, I don't know if you can see back there. There's an old pinball rubber and a. Looks like a. Something. I don't know what the hell that is. And a quarter. So. Yippee. And I would love to open the back for you, but we're missing the key for the back, and uh, we're going to kind of have to get in there if we're going to do any work uh, cleaning this up, cleaning the inside up, and converting it. So this is going to have to get drilled out. We'll, we'll, we'll do that together. We'll have a fun time drilling out the lock together because there's so many people out there who go, how do I drill out a lock? It's not hard. There's also the camp of people who say you should buy a locksmith kit and, and pick it um i'm actually buddies with a locksmith at work i probably could have him come over and do that but screw it i'm just gonna drill it whatever it's easy enough to do i'll show you that so um that's all for now uh yeah the thing that's amazing too about this game is it still has a ground prong on the uh plug i found that shocking <laughs> I, don't think I've ever, I don't think i've ever bought anything that still had its ground prong attached as far as, uh, as far as arcade games go. But I digress. I don't want to make this too lengthy. So when I come back, uh, we'll, uh, you know, when I come back, we'll turn it on. We'll play it a little bit. And then we'll, uh, we'll cut to maybe drilling, uh, drilling that lockout so you can see how I do that. So, all right, be back in a bit. Okay, and there's our lock. So a uh, couple things before we get started. To do this, uh, number one, you're gonna need a drill. Here's our drill. I have you zoomed in. Eh, let's do this. Here's our drill. All right, it's a regular Makita 18 volt cordless drill. The other thing we're gonna need, and the most important thing, we're gonna need drill bits. These are the ones I use. These are metal drill bits. Don't go getting the drill bits that you use to make uh, model ships with your kit or anything like that. You don't want any old drill bits, you want nice, sharp, metal drill bits. Right, that's what's going to work. Right, uh, part of the problem is, um, if you go to start uh, drilling this, and the bit breaks off in the lock, right? metal drill bits are hardened, hardened steel, you're going to have a hell of a time trying to get that drill bit out of there, and then, it's not the end of the world, but, you know, you're, uh, you're, you're, your quick project, your quick drilling out your lock just uh, took you a whole lot longer. Now, it should be said, and I, you probably hear my dryer going in the background, I apologize. Uh, it should be said that the alternative to doing this, at least on this cabinet, is we could always take the monitor out through the front and then reach in and uh, undo the, the bolt that's holding the hasp in. That's, you know, 
causing this to be locked. But we're going to drill it. Uh, let's zoom in. You know, if I ever become real serious about this YouTube thing, maybe I'll actually get a real camera one day. So, right here we're doing... Uh, we're just going to go. we got a smaller drill, but I think this is 9 sixteenths. We're going to put it in here. We're going to keep it nice and level, and we're going to drill. It's already grabbing our lock. Just take your time. That's the key. Don't try to force it. Light pressure. Let the drill bit do the work. I think we might have gotten it. There we go. So what we wound up doing there is the drill just wound up just unlocking it for us, twisting the hasp, which is great because that means less little uh, metal shavings. We did get some on the floor. We're doing this inside because right now in New York it's about 17 degrees outside. Yeah, that's not happening. So uh, we'll get a vacuum. We'll get some of those metal shavings off the floor, especially if you have kids that run around in their bare feet and stuff. Uh, that's uh, not going to work out well for them. We don't want that to happen. So, here we go. Uh, we'll zoom out. So, yeah, so all that wound up doing, I'll get you off the tripod without disturbing you too much, hopefully. All that wound up doing was twisting our hasp here. Uh, we did damage the lock a little bit, but it just wound up unlocking it, which makes me wonder if I just take, could have taken a big-ass screwdriver and just wrenched it and unlocked it, which I'm guessing I probably could have. So, anyway, there we go. Oh, let's take a look in back here. I was smart this time, and I brought a light. So in there, we got a, uh, a nice K4800, I believe, which is the little, uh, let's see, uh, 5800. I stand corrected. Uh, what does that say back in there? If we could focus. 5806, right? It's basically the little brother of the 4900. Uh, I'll show you. I'll turn it on. I'll show you. I'll show you the monitor. It probably could use a cap kit. I have about four or five of these monitors 13 inches uh, in my in my shed in my storage so i'm not too worried about it if we don't wind up using it i'd like to but it's not going to be the end of the world that's for sure so here's our game board with our uh, our factory duct tape every phrase craze and trivia whiz i've seen winds up having that duct tape in there it's pretty funny uh, duct tape here usually duct tape under here yep, there it is duct tape under there they all have it. There's our game board. Uh, and also, too, the schematics I found out, uh, they're actually not schematics. They're just a wiring diagram, and they're for Trivia Wiz. So this was a Trivia Wiz at one time that was um, converted to Phrase Craze. So there you go. Down here, you have this nice little shelf. No critters living in there. It's actually pretty damn clean. Uh, it looks like you have um, plugs are wired in. I don't know if those are existing. I forget. Forget how my other ones were. But uh, that is for the marquee. As you can see, it's a uh, looks like it's an extension cord that they ran up to the marquee light. So that's cool. No problem. Uh, and those are probably meant to be service outlets, or maybe they were put there for the marquee. I don't know. But whatever. Have our transformer in there. Have a nice bridge rectifier mounted on top of that. I don't remember that. Yeah, we're switching power supply. Awesome. Uh, yeah, and the bottom of this cabinet down in here is, uh, that's where the uh, coin bucket lives. So, nice and clean. Not bad. You could definitely use this. So, the issue is going to be, it looks like it, looks like we took a hit over here, huh? I wonder if this thing, that's interesting. I wonder why that's like that. Huh. See the break up here and the break up here? I wonder why that is. Maybe we'll find out as we do some more digging. Um, so the main issue is going to be getting this monitor, like I mentioned before, from a horizontal um, orientation to a vertical. 
and just by looking at it, you know, it's going to take some doing, but I don't think it's actually going to be that bad. The only thing I'm nervous about is to see if this frame is going to be sticking out the back too much. Uh, yeah, it'd be interesting. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it's gonna if it's gonna work. We're gonna give it a try. It has this nice carrier here. This thing it's bolted into um, that I believe comes out. We could take that out as all as one piece. Remount the monitor to it, and then remount the carrier. It looks like that carrier is gonna have to be modified a little bit, of course. But if we could do that. We can, uh, we can fit that monitor right back in there. So that's going to take some playing around. Let me take the uh, marquee off. And let's see what they did back there with this nice little uh, extension cord. And I wonder if we could see what that damage is. The exterior of the cab is not damaged. Unless somebody relaminated it, but I, I highly doubt that. So, I don't know. All right, let's, uh, let's see. And then after that, we'll give it a, we'll give it a play. Now we got the marquee off. It's in very nice condition, like the rest of the machine. Oh, put that down. And this is, uh, yeah, obviously a replacement fixture. It's got an on-off button under here. Obviously, we'll keep that on. Nice little fluorescent bulb. Uh, F15 T6 WW for warm white. So yeah, all right, cool. So when we're turning this into an arcanoid, that's going to be a pretty damn thin arcanoid marquee, which is fine. <sighs> yep, bad camera work, I know. Uh, that's got to be about four or five inches by 18 inches, I'm guessing. 20 inches, maybe. So in order, uh, an arcanoid marquee to do that. As far as this goes, let's get you back into the light here. I should put some... Oh, there goes my there goes my bracket. So if we look at this, let me try to move it back a little bit so you can get a better view. Sorry. Uh, this pops open like I showed you. Boom, there go my screws on the floor. Um, this comes out, our bezel. We'll put here. There you go. And it has this little surround for the CRT. There is a little, little like finish nail in there that was holding it in place. We took that out. Now the first thing is, which is nice, is if I want to take this and mount it in here vertically, it fits nicely. That's one thing. That's nice. That's a nice, nice shape for that. So I'm, I'm happy about that. We'll keep that down here. Uh, here is how, here's the carrier. That's what the monitor is bolted into. One, two, three, four screws. And I believe, uh, if I remember correctly, this all pulls out toward the front. Um... Does it? No, I don't think it's part of the carrier. I think this is just in here, screwed in here as kind of a surround. So actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take that out, and I'll come back and show you. I'm not going to do that uh, on camera. All right, so if you've never seen a phrase craze, here's your chance. Turn that off. Uh, yeah, as you can see... Um, this has the, um, <laughs> this has the naughty kit in it. Uh, two of the ROMs are for some more racy puzzles. Not exactly what I'd want in a house with kids, especially when we have parties and other people's kids come over. We're not too worried about that because this game isn't staying in here, obviously. But it's, uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you got these nice flashing buttons down here. Oops. Let's do this so you can see it better. You got these flashing buttons down here. That's what you use to choose your letters and everything like that. Um, our marquee lights up real nice up here. There you can see. But let's, uh, let's start a game, shall we? Before I get in trouble with YouTube for having some uh, interesting content. 
the the sound isn't working real good the the volume pots all crappy it just makes a bunch of clicks and dupes and dips you're not missing anything without the sound on we choose one player hit start this monitor can definitely use a cap kit right so it's like wheel of fortune if you've ever seen wheel of fortune stop spinner we could pick our letter we want to try there's no e's this sounds very low i don't know if you could hear it Let's see if they can fix that sound bear with me bear with me if my head's in the way first word is the, right? And every time I make a bad guess, I lose one of my chances, which is represented by the, uh, the face over there. That. No peas. Tomato. Uh, I know it's Tom Collins, though. Oh, Tom Collins cocktail mix. We can, uh, yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. And then we can hit go for broke since we know it. So an N in there, and then there's an X. And then after you play the game, that's it. You get one game. I now have... Uh, I should say too. Oops, I just screwed that up. I should say. Um, that the battery actually is working, but there's a battery on the board that saves the high scores. It saved my high score from earlier this morning when I tried this out. I turned the game off, played it again. I had my high score in there. I just noticed that the high scores were gone. So the battery I thought was actually still working on this board, but it's not. Um, which is not a big deal. So, anyway, there you go. That is Phrase Craze, and, yeah, nothing special. You know, great bar game, but, you know, not for us. Uh, we have uh, bigger plans, right? So, uh, let's take a look at how that monitor is mounted, and maybe we could see if we could flip that around. All right, so now that you had to demo the game, um, I wanted to do that before I started ripping it apart. So, I took a look, and uh, the carrier for the monitor in here, this bracket carrier mount, whatever you want to call it, it's... Uh, it's pretty much, uh, it's in here. It's not coming out. I probably can get it out, but it doesn't make much sense for me to try to rip this thing apart. So what we're going to do uh, is we're just going to take it out, not on camera, take it out, turn it around. All right. The issue we're going to have is uh, we're going to have to cut this, this frame here, obviously, you see up here, because it is obviously longer that way up and down so we're gonna have to cut a hole for the uh the brackets here on the monitor uh monitor frame and we're gonna also have to cut more room out of here where are we here we go cut more room out of here for uh to fit it it should be interesting um i think we should be okay because then what we're gonna have to do is obviously this is going to be mounting to the top and the bottom once we turn this around. So we don't want to take too much meat out of it. 
we do want this to still have some structural integrity put this wood back here this is like three quarter inch so i don't think we're going to have a whole lot of problems with that and worst comes to worst we'll get some metal some metal um metal brackets metal strapping we could always reinforce it as a matter of fact i think we are going to do that too just to be safe i have some stuff in my parts collection over there um and i think as you can see this is this is burned pretty good but uh it, it's you know i'd say this is medium to medium heavy it, it's not terrible um it's not really visible too much when we're playing a game so we're going to try it out we're going to try to stick with this monitor uh, i am going to cap it while i have it out i have that chassis out because this thing uh it doesn't look like it was ever removed so it probably definitely needs the service and we'll clean it up a little bit but so we'll, we'll, we'll cap that frame uh, uh we'll cap the chassis while we have the chassis out you know we'll um that's one less component on there we'll work on getting this routed out and flipping it around uh, as a matter of fact, it would probably it would probably behoove us. Well, maybe not. I was gonna say take the tube out and just work with the frame itself. That way, make it lighter, easier to move around, not worry about snapping the neck or anything like that. So we'll we'll, we'll think about that. Maybe we'll wind up doing that. But uh, at any rate, let me dismantle this. Uh, think about this a little bit more, and I'll come back and I'll show you what I got. Okay, so <laughs> change of plans, as you can probably see. Um, these cabinets uh, actually come apart pretty easy, all right, and I probably should have filmed it as I was doing it, but, um, so what I did was, as you can see here on the sides, there were two, two pieces of one by one strapping, right, and what those did is they, like here, see, they went along the side here. Uh, I three screws in them and they had some staples right so I took the screws out and I gently knocked uh, hit it with a hammer small hammer where's my hammer my hammer is around here a minute ago gently knocked them out toward the back and that way I was able to stick a screwdriver in there and gently pry everything out so I was able to get those out once I got those out I unscrewed Here's the frame, the wood frame the monitor is in. I unscrewed the two screws from each side. And then I hammered on the top. This also had staples in it. You can see the staples right here. They stapled it in from the inside. I took a, not a small hammer. I you know, used a decent amount of force, but didn't, didn't rush it. And I hit it down. And the reason I hit it down was because if those staples scratch the inside of the cabinet, if they scratched it underneath where the monitor is, no harm, no foul, you're not gonna see that. If I tried to hit it up, then it would scratch up in here where we're gonna see where we're, when we're playing. So uh, if you have to do damage, or you think you're gonna do damage, always try to, if you can avoid it, or if you can manage it, always try to do the damage below where people are gonna see. And it really actually didn't scratch up all that bad. Uh, I'm gonna wipe this down but it came out pretty easily. So, uh, not too bad. That was five minutes it took me to get that out. Um, so what I'm gonna try to do is, I'm gonna see, I, 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 it really doesn't look square. So I doubt I'm going to be able to take that monitor frame. My original thought was to take it, the piece like this, and flip it and reattach it to that uh, outer kind of bracket. I don't think that's gonna work. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the existing, like I said, I'll, I'll get a template, get some measurements from my monitor that's out right now, and uh, I'm going to cut into the existing, the existing surround. Um, I figure if that doesn't work, what I could do is just take this existing piece, oops, sorry about that, this existing piece of surround take off these pieces of pine or whatever that is um, plywood whatever pop it off reorient it and then come up with another mounting system to stick it in the uh in the cabinet i mean quite frankly it could be as easy as um getting some you know rigid metal rigid metal strapping some rigid metal brackets and hanging that on the rigid metal brackets 
which would uh, all the dimensions matching up most. I can see my indent, my um, that indentation, my uh, witness marks of where that wood was and everything like that. So I can, um, you know, I can I can line things up. I think using the uh, the existing markings. So that is what I'm going to do. Uh, I'd rather just leave it in this frame here and just cut this to size. But the more I look at it the more I don't know if I'm going to have the room to do that. I think it's going to be, I'm ne going to need to take way too much meat off the top and bottom of this in order to effectively and safely mount it. So um, let me work that out and I'll come back to you and I'll tell you what I, uh, tell you what I figured out. All right, so welcome to monitor storage. Um, so I have a couple 13 inches. I'm thinking what I want to do, instead of waiting to get a cap kit and everything for that, for that cabinet. I think I'm just going to mount one of these and then I'll cap that other one and put it in storage here. I got one, two, three. Uh, I thought I had a fourth one. Uh, I got a bunch of 19 inches too. Uh, medium res up there. 49.15. I don't know why I'm saving that. Uh, but I think I'm going to take one of these. I believe this one right here is a uh, ugh, so much crap in my shed this is a uh i think a k7000 series i want to say i recapped it you can see right there i put the spade connector in for the ground wire uh, so i know i recapped it uh maybe i'll grab this guy out he's got a little bit of burn i forget where i got i think i got this out of a um out of an old Tato trim line, Tato, Tato, whatever, Tato trim line uh, cabaret. And I wound up, uh, I don't know what I wound up doing with this. I wonder if this thing even works. I should probably warm this up and then test it. Uh, we also have this one down here. I'm not quite sure what this is. Uh, actually, I think this is the uh, K7000 series. So maybe we'll, uh, maybe we'll take that one. I don't know. We'll see. And I got this guy up here. No, this is the one I got out of the Taito trim line. This one, this one's seen better days. Uh, yeah, I don't know. So I'm going to grab one of these, I think. And we'll wind up using one of these. I think this came out of a... Uh, for the love of God, I can't remember where I got these. I can't remember where I got any of these. This came out of a double dragon. See the time burnt in up here. Uh, this came out of a championship sprint. Uh, and this... Came out of a Gondomania. I remember those. I don't remember the rest of these. That one, uh, I don't know. I don't know where the hell that one came from. But uh, yeah, so I'm gonna grab one of these monitors. I think we'll, I think we'll grab this guy. He looks promising. Uh, this guy or this guy, whichever one seems to be the K7000 series. And we'll take this inside. We'll stick it in the cabinet. And I'll show you how I, I rig this up. It's a little precarious. It's safe, but getting it in is gonna be precarious. I'm kind of not. Not <laughs> looking looking forward to that. So, all right, uh, we'll come back. All right, here's our end product. Almost looks like it was uh, it was built that way, huh? Looks like it was made to be there. So how do we do this, right? So obviously we have our little plastic uh, surround here. Take that off. Put you over here. Uh, and then we have this piece, right? You remember this piece? This um. No, I guess this is also a surround. So one of the reasons I um, I wanted to use the existing lumber or parts of the existing lumber. <sighs> there we go. You can kind of see what I did here now, right? So we used uh, that same piece of wood, mounting wood. We just cut off the bottom and the top of it, and we mounted the sides to the sides. And the reason I wanted to do that, and I had that that... There's pieces of one by blocking underneath that supporting this as well. And this is also screwed into the cabinet. The reason I wanted to do that was because this is the angle we need. I wanted to use that nice piece of surround wood that came with the cabinet because that plastic surround fits perfectly right there into that nice wooden surround. And it's blacked out with the, um, with the laminate around it. So that, 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 that looked really good. That, that fit perfectly. So I wanted to use that, 
So I adapted uh, these sides. I kept these are the original sides, all right, because that way I could use the lumber that's attached to it. I have something to mount my L channel to, which I got this. These is this is just got it at the um, hardware section at Lowe's, right down the street from me. Uh, I think I bought like four pieces. Only needed really two by the time I started measuring and cutting up, cutting it up. <coughs> excuse me, but I, I get I, this stuff comes in handy for a lot of things. So I cut two pieces, supports like this. And the reason I had to cut two pieces of supports like that was twofold. Number one, um, all the way up at the top, in order to get a vertical monitor to fit like this, I had to um, go right to the edge of the wood. I wasn't comfortable going right to the edge of the wood. I wanted some support there. So if you look, you'll see um, it's over the metal. And this metal is screwed into this. I'm going to screw it into the side. So even technically speaking, if this little edge of the wood fails where I have the monitor screwed into, it's going to be supported by the uh, the edge of the metal because this stuff's pretty rigid. It's not um it's not going to let go. It's not going to give out or bend. It's pretty good. So I have that going for me. I did the same thing on the other side, and that's why I have these two pieces of L channel on the sides. And then obviously to mount the top and bottom brackets, I had to put L channel on the bottom here. I screwed it in right fender washer since these holes are big. Um, nice little holes in those fender washers, screws fit nicely. And I did the same thing up there. Now, in order to get this in, uh, two things I had to do. Number one, uh, I couldn't take it out from the front. Remember our last one, I, I believe we took it out from the front. I had to, uh, well, I couldn't put it in from the front. I had to put it in from the back. So I bolted this piece of uh, L-channel in. I came in from the back. I tilted it in. I laid this bracket in. I lifted up the monitor and then I slipped that piece of L-channel under that bracket resting on this metal and let the monitor come to rest. Uh, it's the only way you're going to do this without breaking the neck or, or scratching up the cabinet or whatever. So it was a little tricky. Probably better to do with two people. I did it with just myself. I had everything staged right so I could just slip that piece of L-channel in. And then I got it to where I wanted it and then I, I secured it with screws uh, to make sure it's you know nice and... Make sure it's not going anywhere. It's nice and uh, nice and held in there. Um, so yeah. So then I just put, as you saw, I had that. I uh, put the wood around it so I could center it in the bracket. Um, pretty much where it is now. It's it's pretty much centered where I want it. I'll get some regular nuts and bolts. I'll secure it to the L channel. Not gonna leave it floating like that. Hell no. And we are good to go. Uh, this is one of the monitors from outside. This is actually a. Um, uh, a 4800. Uh, it's not like the 5806 we have over there. This is a 4800, and I capped it a uh, year before last. I really should put notes on these things, working or not working. I'm guessing it was just in the shed. It was a good working monitor, and I just wanted to keep it. So, And I'm pretty sure also I have the correct orientation. There's some burn-in from something here. I don't know. It might even be Galaga or something. Um, and it looks like I have the monitor oriented correctly. Don't forget, when we tried to plug the Arkanoid and the Pac-Man over there, uh, it was upside down. Which isn't the end of the world, we could always flip the oak wires, but I'd rather have it in there and just have it good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this monitor warm up. It's 20-something degrees outside again. I'm going to let this warm up probably for about half the day or right by the furnace, so it shouldn't take that long. And then I'm going to plug in Phrase Craze to it. Yes, Phrase Craze is going to be tilted, but I'm curious to see how this monitor looks. Um, of course, after I went through all the damn trouble getting it in the right way, I'm curious to see how this thing looks. Um, and quite frankly, it wasn't even all that bad getting it in here, putting it in and tilting it up and slipping that bracket in. It wasn't that bad a job. So I'm not too worried about it if I have to take this one out and do it again. As far as the monitor orientation in the cabinet, we do have a couple issues now. Uh, the elephant in the room right here is that this frame is now coming out past the back of the cabinet. So what we're going to wind up doing with that, I think if you've ever seen the back of that, these Miss Pac-Mans and Pac-Man uh, cabarets, they have the same issue. Um, we're probably going to wind up modifying this back door. Uh, we're going to cut a hole in it, and we're going to put like a plastic bubble on it, right? Those are uh, the Pac-Man cabarets, Miss Pac, and a couple other games have a bubble on the back where the, um, the frame kind of pops out uh, into. And I'm sure I could probably find one of those somewhere. Make a hole, and I'll put that like that. That way it's covered and protected. All right. And, yeah, so obviously, too, having the monitor like this doesn't give us a ton of room to work. 
It's not a big deal though, Arkanoids, that small square board. Uh, I've given up the idea of trying to go back and maybe make this a freeze crease again one day. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all this wiring out. We're gonna take uh, the board out um, and we're gonna, uh, we're gonna make it nice and neat and we're gonna wire it up for Arkanoid. Um, the only thing I, I, I think I am gonna do is uh, obviously this needs to run on an isolation transformer. Probably gonna keep the isolation transformer that's in here. I don't see why not. I'm gonna wind up taking the rest of everything else out. I have a couple extra ISOs if I need them, but I'll use them if I don't have to. And um, what's a nice thing too, if I didn't mention it, is this is this is actually a sliding drawer. This comes out. So once we get all the wires out, we can take this piece of wood out totally. I can use that room I have then to work on all this stuff. You know, obviously, yeah, it'd be easier with the monitor out. And we could always take it out if we want to, but I was just really dying to see if my whole contraption here was going to work. And it does. Yay me. Um, so we're going to... Um, we're going to leave this like this for now. We'll try to power it on with the phrase craze in there just to see how that monitor is working. And then, um, yeah, uh, after we test the monitor out, we're going to call this episode a wash. And we're going to, uh, when we come back in the next episode, we're going to start uh, tearing this stuff out and wiring this up for uh, Arkanoid. One thing I'm going to do, if I didn't say it already, because now I'm starting to ramble, is I'm going to put a new... Uh, New switcher in here, new switching power supply. Uh, this one's good, but God only knows how long this has been in there. I'm guessing since the 80s, I have five or six new switchers. The one I'll just use the one I, I wired up already. Remember, you remember that for um to test it. But I'll try to wire it to the switch so we have an on and off switch that works. Um, so yeah. All right. So uh, let's wait for this to warm up. I have some other stuff to do around the house, and we'll come back a little later. Okay, it's several hours later. I gave our monitor some nice time to warm up, and here it is. Success, it looks pretty good. Uh, you'll notice, if you look closely, that down here, in this part of it, the color's a little faded. Uh, you can see maybe here, the difference. I think it just needs to be degaussed, degaussed, whatever you want to say. Um, that's usually the reason for that. I mean, guns are usually either good or bad. It's not like they're less good in one part of the monitor and more good somewhere else so uh, this needs to go sink the gaussing whatever we're gonna we can take care of that but uh, otherwise hey listen the uh, the picture looks good the colors are good uh our picture looks pretty straight in that tube it might be a tiny bit crooked but we could uh we could probably adjust that out with the adjustments but yeah so um we're gonna call uh we're gonna call this phase done I, i'm gonna say we have a, su a successful monitor mounting and um and a decent monitor so yeah all right that'll do it and when we come back uh we're gonna start wiring this up and um i ordered the uh the marquee i know you can't see that it's dark i ordered the marquee i gotta order the control panel overlay but we're uh, well on our way to getting this set up the way we want it to so once again thanks for watching again if you have a question uh parkway arcade p-a-r-k-w-a-y-a-r-c-a-d-e at gmail.com if you want to ask a question, I'll read it in the next episode in the camera, as long as it's appropriate for all viewers, if you know what I'm saying. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.